speaking of Tommy or the officiating, take your pick. I don't care. Hmm. What what effect did those two plays, consecutive plays, in the on Baylor's first drive? Boy, I don't know. Have to do with the outcome. Yeah, I I, I think that had a obviously you know those are those are my sixty yards of penalties in terms of two drives that. Man, it certainly had a, a huge effect on the flow of the game because I really felt like, um, and there's multiple things we needed to do, but the momentum, we were never able to control the momentum of the football game from early on. And you know, it's unfortunate because I really thought we came out and played really well and we were physical, um, you know, from my end. Uh, and again, that's being the coach and we'll, we'll navigate this through the journey, but I don't think those are right. Um, and, and again, you, you work through it and you guide through it, but. Uh, you know, I think it's frustrating, but equally, there's some things we did that were frustrating today, too. You know, we needed to be better. Um, I thought there were some great things we did. Our precision and detail, um, you know, didn't allow us to gain the momentum of the football game. What did you, kind of explanations did you get? Yeah, I, I think, again, that's – you won't get real explanations until, you know, this week, I'm sure. And – um, again, you know, I think some of those are coming from in the Big 12. Some of those go back to the Big 12 office, and they, they look at those plays as well. So, you know, I'm sure we'll get good explanation here moving ourselves forward, and, and we'll continue to try to do a great job of teaching our guys the right way. Yet despite all that, you claw within three at halftime, get the ball first, yeah. and then unfortunately the turnover. Just kind of one of those days, the way things piled up. Yeah, I, I think the word's momentum. You know, I, I think, Rob, from my end, and, and we know this is a game, a game of momentum, and you always felt like we were fighting from behind to gain it. Now, you know, what I love about this group, and I love this group, this group's got a chance to, to do some special things here. Um, but what I love about them is they kept playing, and they kept fighting, and they kept competing. Um, what was frustrating, you know, or there are, you know, that, that little sequence, there's a sequence in the third quarter, we just kind of, man, we sputtered for whatever reason. And, you know, we'll have to go look back at that. You know, we were, again, we're playing in a little bit into their, their hands because we're playing a game that's probably more conducive to their rhythm than ours. And, you know, the fact of the matter of it is, you know, you're playing catch up most of the day and that's hard. Jirel had the big run late, but up until that point, the, the running game had not had a lot of success. Why was that? Yeah, and I, I don't even think that's a real statement, to be honest, because I think what it's perception, and again, the perception is there we're behind. So we're trying to catch up in the football game. And when you're playing from behind a little bit, you're leaning on the passing game to try to get you going. And, you know, I, I just I think the reality of that is, you know, even handing the ball off a little bit, you just you're you, you know, there's a couple three and outs, so the, the stats make it look different than the reality of it. I, I, I think it was more a flow of the game than it is actual, man, did they have trouble rushing the ball or not. It was kind of the flow of the game and some of the statistics that didn't allow a rushing game to really start to get rolling in the game. You mentioned the third quarter. From your perception, why did you guys, I think you said sputter? Well, I, you turned the ball over. So, you know, you start from there and that, that turnover, it's it's you know now all of a sudden you're into a total you know rat race and trying to get yourself back in the football game which we did just you know not the ability to get the stop we needed and certainly not the ability to get the drive we needed fast enough to swing it totally back into our favor Matt, you seem a little more upbeat than maybe you would after a normal loss. Did you see something today that, that you come out of this game makes you think, hey, maybe we did do some good things? Man, I, I thought that there was a lot of positive. You know, I, I think from our football team, um, number one, I thought special teams was the best we played. You know, um, a lot of young guys on those units, which will serve us well. That's a great special teams team that we just competed against. Um, you know, I think from an offense and defensive perspective, there are a lot of really good things from this football game that we were able to do it's the, the detail it's the precision and it's a young football team that's going to grow from this and so I I love the way our leadership keeps playing I love the way that the leadership continues to not look at the scoreboard and just keep playing I think those things are our traits of some of the really good teams that we've been fortunate to have um, they have those identities and, and again it's great now we'll see next week who this team is and how we respond and how we come back because you know we're, we're obviously going into another great challenge and I think you guys see this league from top to bottom you're going to get challenged every week and you better have great poise and leadership to be able to, to navigate it. Matt when you have those mistakes whether it be the in, in, inter interceptions or penalties did you would you characterize those in this game as, as mental mistakes focus mistakes or is it an execution thing or is it is it something else I didn't notice? Well, 
the first half mistakes, I don't know if they're ours. Um, now, the second half mistakes, there's some mental things that happen, and we'll have to be better, you know. And, and there are a couple of mistakes that we have to we have to clean up. So, uh, again, we'll we'll look at that. We'll evaluate it. I'm not naive um, to say or to be the kind of coach that's ever going to blame one side of it. Because here at Iowa State, we've learned you have to you have to make the ball bounce your way. And you know the reality of it is that showed up. And what a great lesson for this young team to learn real fast as we get in the Big 12 play. Uh, Jairo Brock took a big hit in the first half, and then after one playoff, he was right there making plays at the goal line. Can you just speak on his toughness a little bit? Ooh, yeah, I mean, you're you're talking, man. That guy's a tough character. I mean, his attitude, his effort, his toughness. You feel Jairo play the game of football the right way, and and I, I am so grateful for his toughness. Now I'd like him to hold on to the ball, crossing the end zone. Um, that's not toughness. That's precision. Okay, but man, his toughness, the way he plays, the way he battles, the way he he continues to lead that running back room, that's really fun for us. And those are those are great things that will guide us moving forward for sure. I know you're probably going to say it's the next man up type of situation, but how difficult was it losing Bo? I mean, it's like the third or fourth play of the game, as good as he is, especially in run support. Yeah, you know, I, obviously, I think anytime you lose a, a player like that, that's not easy. And, you know, again, you know, for Bo, uh, man, that's two games now. You know, he didn't get to play last week because he was dung, dinged up. And, and um, you know, you lose him this week, too. And, you know, that, that guy's a special football player. We'll have to look at the video and see how the rest of those guys played. But, uh, yeah, it's never e easy losing a player like that in a game. How did Dimitri impress you answering their first touchdown with his first touchdown catch and I think three more? Yeah, you know, I, I think he's a guy, again, that continues to really show up when you go to practice. And, you know, I, I think he would have been a name coming out of fall camp that you were really excited about, again, what he's done. I, I think for me, again, you, you talk positives. Man, that receiver room, it's, there's some guys that are really starting to come. I thought Jalen had a, another really good day. I, I think we think the world of him, Sean, last week, you know, and then obviously, you know, Dimitri this week. I think those things are, are positive and they will serve us well moving forward. Not that the officials cost Iowa State the game. I'm not saying that. Are you a fan of replay? Oh, shit. Randy, you're asking the wrong time. I, I, I don't I'm know. I'm asking you. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how to answer that question right now. So, next question. I'll wait till Tuesday. Mm hmm. You guys good? Just one real quick. All right, go ahead, Rob. Baylor was able to get some pressure, the four sacks on Hunter. It seemed like a lot of those were covered sack situations where he had some time, but just great coverage. What did you see on, on Boy, I, 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 you know, man, I, I really felt like the offensive line was playing really well today. You know, I mean, that's a talented front. And, you know, again, I, I, it's a stat, so, you know, you'll write about the stat, but the reality of it is, man, I, I don't think that's really a truism. I think there was a lot of really good coverage, um, you know, and, and for whatever reason, you know, either we weren't consistent with our reads or, you know, or maybe there was one or two of those. It'll be good, interesting to look back at and see if it is, you know, maybe pressure. But I, I really felt like from the beginning of the game to the end of the game, that offensive line played really good football against a really talented front. Thanks, guys. Thanks,